Hey guys, um, so good morning. I decided to vlog today because I am going to Denver. Um, but I was thinking this morning about like vlogging and then I was like, oh, like I have to put makeup on. I can't not wear makeup. And then I was like, that's really interesting because I didn't really used to feel that way. But what I think is also interesting is like, it's just like how it affects your self-esteem, right? And, and I'm not saying that like, anyone that edits their pictures is bad like it's your face it's your body you can do whatever you want with it i'm not even like against plastic surgery or anything like that it's like it's it's one thing to like maybe smooth out some acne like acne doesn't really represent who you are right it's not a permanent thing on your face it's just something that happens so like i understand wanting to start out small with things like that but then like when you're full on like editing like your lips to be bigger your hips to be smaller it's like it just, when you start editing all your features, it does affect your self-esteem because we have like our idea of ourselves, right? And then when we go into society, you kind of have the person that you become like around people or at school. We all have, you know, levels of that kind of mask in society. And when we, um, when you go on Instagram and it's your own page and you're editing these pictures of yourself and you're changing your entire face or changing your entire body, like, it's not even about what other people think or what other people see. It's about how you feel when you're doing that. Because at the end of the day, when you take your makeup off and you put your phone down and you realize that that's not you, that void in yourself is getting bigger and bigger. Like that gap between your real self and this mask person is huge because not only are you, you know, acting probably a little bit differently, like in, you know, person versus when you're alone, but now everyone around you thinks that you look a, a certain way and you don't, and then you feel like you have to wear even more makeup maybe in real life to kind of get those same effects, and like, you, you just feel like you have to put so much, so much on before you can leave the house and be acceptable, and that's the part that hurts your self-esteem. When you are completely stripped down and when you're alone and you're away from everyone else and everyone else's idea of you what you see is the fact that you had to put on however much makeup use x amount of lights use you know however much facetune to make your own self feel like you're worthy like you're acceptable of being seen by other people just being seen you have to change so much about yourself and that place to be because it's hard to break out of that you know you have to like the more that you edit and the more that you cover things up the more that it's hard to be your vulnerable self and the more that you're teaching yourself that you need to change to be okay you're still not inside filling up that hole in yourself that's saying that how I am wasn't good enough so I had to go through x y and z to be good enough and again I'm not saying any of these things are bad you can handle it in a in a really positive way no matter how much you change yourself or edit yourself or whatever that void is still going to be there and you can still get plastic surgery after addressing that and be like this is just another step in me feeling good about myself that's fine but just address like the place that it's coming from is it coming from a place of emptiness and not having what you need and needing all these other things to be good enough or is it coming from a place of I know who I am I know what I love I know what I like and I know what I want to look like and this one thing is going to help me get there um, so that's just kind of what I wanted to put out there, like even with myself and makeup and stuff, I want to like make sure that I'm still comfortable enough to like go out without it and not have it be this giant thing that affects my day. But anyways, I'm going to uh, change and then make some coffee. I will see you there. Hey guys, um, so as you just saw, I just met up with my friend and we had like a late breakfast um, and just brainstormed. So she does have a YouTube channel. Um, if you see this, hi Ellie. It was so great to hang out with her and just talk about um, just like mental health and like the stuff that we're both interested in and especially to have a friend to talk about business with. Like business is one of those things where it's always a journey. There's always more to do and more to grow. And it's really hard to like manage your self esteem and feel good enough in business I've found. Um, and that's why like in my last vlog, I talked about how I'm going to be an ambitious person and I'm going to have so many goals that I'm never going to catch up to them. Like even if over my whole lifetime, I achieve all of my goals, it's not something that's going to happen right now or going to happen tomorrow. And I have to just make myself be okay with that idea and so 
um, I've realized that that's a huge part of feeling like I'm good enough when it comes to my business is like I need to feel like I have all my ducks in a row and everything done and everything figured out but that's never really how it's going to be but it's so helpful to have other people in your life that you know do these kinds of things so that can relate to like what you're going through yeah it's just hard to figure out on your own and when you feel lonely and when you feel isolated in something I feel like that's when it's the easiest to just give up and be done with it I'm trying to find more things that are like sustainable in my life that keep me wanting to do what I'm doing because like being on the verge of giving up every day is like emotionally exhausting and it shouldn't be that hard when I know it's something that I love um so yeah just being able to like be friends with people and talk to people in real life about all the things that we're doing online is so so helpful um and I feel like if you have any sort of interests that like your main friend group doesn't have or that you know a lot of people in your life don't share like don't give up on that interest just because other people don't understand it just find other people in your life or online that do understand it. The other thing that I quickly wanted to say on the topic of just like confidence and all of that is um, just celebrating like who you are and being okay with being weird like I don't know I mean there probably are tons of like I guess at, like at my age like I'm 25 right and like there are a lot of people that still party around my age or would still want to go out um, like would still rather go out clubbing or whatever but for me like I'm just kind of that just doesn't serve me the same way that it used to and I think a lot of that is just like my past with it and everything um so like I would have ordinarily judged myself super hard for having like a low-key kind of chill birthday or thought that I was just like a grandma or something but like honestly I'm fine with it and like that's what makes me me and I think just like finding little ways to celebrate who you are helps you so much overall with like your own self-confidence like when you can celebrate who you really are and you feel like you are you know really seeing yourself and like appreciating yourself it's so much easier to celebrate other people too like and i saw this quote online and it was like one woman's beauty doesn't mean a lack of your own and that's kind of what i'm saying here. and the more that you kind of celebrate your own differences and like what makes you so special it makes it easier to be like oh that person's so cool but that's okay because they're there and i'm here and that's what makes this world collectively or this community amazing i th I think that that's just a beautiful message that we can carry over into so many parts of our lives. Okay, well I did want to share that with you guys and now I'm going to get ready for dinner. Bye.
Hello guys, so it is like 7, almost 7 p.m. on Monday night. I didn't vlog the rest of last night, but honestly we just came home, ordered some Chinese food and like vegged out. But I did want to end the vlog with one last thing that I wanted to say about confidence and all of that. And like something that I've realized lately is that con like being confident and like the initial stages, it, stages of it are never not scary. Yeah, sometimes in life we just want to wait around until we're like not scared all of a sudden or like we think that like one day we're just gonna wake up like wanting to work super hard every day and like wanting to change up all of our habits we kind of spend all this time waiting for it to happen and a lot of us don't realize like okay i need to actually make this a reality and look at what my life is realistically day to day without lying about it and see what it takes to like actually build up from there like someone that's confident can still you know they just feel comfortable in themselves even if even if they're trying something new and even if they look dumb or like they look like it's their first time doing something they're okay with that and like that's the point that I'm getting to it's like you might not always be in your comfort zone and someone that's confident is okay with stepping out of their comfort zone and trying something new you have to realistically look at what is my comfort zone right now and how can I kind of push the edge of that because as you start to do new things your comfort zone is going to grow and grow because you're going to feel more comfortable or at least familiar with doing all these new things so even if you know as you grow up up and you know change career paths or have different phases of your life you're always going to be on to something new but the more experience that you have doing other new things and the more experience that you have branching out of your comfort zone the easier it's going to be for you to try something else that's new down the line because you're going to be more comfortable in your abilities and more comfortable in who you are and just an example of that is like i was always really afraid of confrontation or saying that anyone you know hurt my feelings or disrespected me so something that I did was, you know, it was really hard for me especially to like stand up for myself at work and stand up for myself in an environment where I had to be professional. Um, but what I was a little bit more okay with was like, you know, just talking to a friend. So I could set boundaries with a friend or talk to a friend about, you know, something that I may have taken the wrong way or tried to clear up some sort of communication with a friend. And because I had a few different examples of doing that, I was more okay talking to a boss about something that I didn't feel good about at work because I had those other examples of having to talk to someone about something uncomfortable, feeling like I went into it with the right mindset, and then also getting respect back from that person. It was still a good practice and made me feel much more comfortable because I was like, well, I know what this conversation could go like. I know how I should act in the conversation. So there's little things that you can do that are actual like steps that you can take to build your confidence. A big part of self-confidence and of growing any part of you and a big part of personal growth, I feel, is looking back and really reflecting on how much you've grown. And one of the ways that I love doing that is every time I have a similar experience, I think about, you know, what I was like the last time I had that experience. And that's exactly how it was at this concert that I went to. Um, it was my third time seeing Thundercat, my second time seeing Anderson Pack, And also, just being at this venue um, is something that's very special to me but thinking about you know the last time I was there maybe a year ago how different I am and with confidence and things like that you know you become so much more secure in having a certain experience but the special part about it is kind of reflecting on how much that experience has changed you and how much you have grown since the last time you did that thing and looking back and seeing you know how scared you were to do something for the first time and you know doing it 10 times over makes you realize that you're so much more confident and it makes you feel like you can kind of conquer anything and so I just wanted to leave this vlog on that note like the more that you grow and the more that you push yourself and step outside of your comfort zone make sure that you're celebrating that and really congratulate yourself for those little things and whether it's you know buying something or going out to dinner or having you know a little time to yourself that's extra special self-care time whatever it is just make sure that you're you know showing yourself how important important it is and how proud of yourself you are because sometimes we're so focused on growing and the next thing and the next biggest thing that we forget to reflect on how much we've changed and who we've become in that process so the biggest thing is to just keep congratulating yourself and pushing yourself forward on this beautiful journey. Um, so let me know if you have any questions about self-confidence and let me know if you enjoy this new format of vlogging and otherwise I will see you in my next
video. So I will put all my links up here in the description below. Um, I do post on Instagram almost every day, so definitely follow me on there if you want to interact with me a little bit more. And otherwise, I will catch you guys next week. Bye.